Cameron, the former leader of the Scottish National Party, former First Minister of Scotland, he's going to be here in the studio in a short while, and maybe he can answer that question among, among a few others. Looking forward to that too. Now, we've still got in the studio with us now, my political panel, Greg Clark, the Tory business minister, he's on the line. Mary Cray, the Labour Shadow International Development Secretary. Brian Paddock from the Liberal Democrats. And William Dartmouth from the UK Independence Party. Now, all of you want to reintroduce and say hi again to Temi Shogiola and uh, Chidi Amadi, who are two young people who are genuinely undecided about what they're going to vote, though we know they are going to vote. I bumped into both of them uh, through Patchwork, which is the, the organisation they have in common, which seeks to engage underrepresented communities in politics. And so I've invited them in here to take this chance. Both of you now, if you've got questions for this panel, now is the time. Have a go. Go for it then, Chidi. Oh, right, me, that's okay. Um, so I have a question regarding the NHS. I'm currently a fourth-year medical student at King's College London, and um, with regards to the current rhetoric around the NHS, things seem a bit bleak, I'd say, with regards to A&E, waiting times, you've got GPs, and the, the great desire for them in the country, and an aging population. So what do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? What, what's your ideal answer Well, that might swing your vote? With with what with the reforms which are necessary for the NHS, what do the main parties see fit um, to reform in the NHS, albeit that this has to be inevitable? Right, let's start with Greg Clark, the Conservative on the panel. Greg, what could you say that might win might win Chile's vote? Sure, John. Well, it's clear for, in the case of the NHS that you have to uh, be commit for the long term. And lots of the investment decisions that are made, careers in. Uh, in nursing uh, and medicine, for example, uh, these are over far more than the life uh, of any one parliament. And what the NHS has done uh, under its chief executive is to put a plan together, completely non-political, uh, and uh, they've said that they need to have an extra £8 billion pounds by the end of this part. And you said you'll provide that money. And we said we'd provide that. And, and you I haven't told us where you're going to find the money. Is that no, a bit of a problem? That's no, a big no, problem. No, it's a, it's a commitment that comes out of the uh, of the spending of the plans that we've, uh, we've set up. But let, let me just make the point that the reason for backing that is that it does what's necessary, I think, in two respects. One is that it commits for the long term. So it's not a kind of feast and famine one year to the, to no. the other. And the second is that it, it, it's objective. This is what the NHS say that they need, and I think it's right okay. to commit to that. Now, allow me, Greg, I'm going to get Chili to just give us a quick observation on that, then I'm going to carry on. If I can ask for really, really brief contributions, we can cover a bit of ground, hopefully, okay. here in just a short while. I mean, well, always press. What do you make of what you've just heard? It sounds like the usual rhetoric that we hear about the NHS. I mean, a couple of minutes ago, I was called a, a Tory by so-called qualified I think she was, psychoanalyst. I don't think so she was really, terribly serious. To be fair, I don't know. <laughs> I think she was. Okay. Um, but it just sounds like this, the usual rhetoric that we hear. £8 billion pounds is a hole that needs to be plugged, and there's no clear yeah. uh, mandate as to where that's going to come okay. from. Mary Craig, can you briefly do any better? Well, Greg Clark and I sat in Parliament listening to the budget on the 23rd of March, where not one penny extra was given to the National Health Service, and now suddenly the Tories are promising at this £8 billion pounds and they can't say where it's coming from. Are you going to outbid David them? Cameron, you outbid David them, Cameron promised um, no top-down reorganisation of the NHS last time and then spent £3 billion pounds doing that. What we've said, the Labour Party, Mary is that we'll have a £2.5 no, billion pounds time to care fund. We're going to hire 20,000 more nurses. We're going to hire 8,000 more GPs to deal with the crisis in A&E, the understaffing on the wards, and um, link up the NHS hospital to home so we get the elderly people mm -hmm. able to get into those step-down facilities, freeing up beds. But today, Andy Burnham has also looked at that NHS workforce plan. <clears throat> We've seen the Tories have got this plan to cut over 2,000 uh, nurses over the next four years. So the Tories' promises on the NHS just can't be trusted. Okay, Chidi and Sammy, I should have warned you to bring in a wheelbarrow <laughs> to take home the stats that, that are going to get thrown at you. During the course of, the, of this quickly, discussion, just yeah, go quickly, quickly, comment. quickly, uh, Chili. I mean, Mary, I have to say, this sounds very much like the like, like the Tory plan, but in a sort of red jacket. Except it's paid for. It, by a mansion tax on the largest homes in London, over tax, £2 million. Pounds. But the mansion tax will only raise millions. We need billions. And it will raise said, billions. And you haven't said how you're going to cover the £8 billion uh, funding deficit that we need for the NHS. You're already promising far more doctors, far more nurses. How does this add up? It sounds like just like the Tory plan in a red jacket. Okay, I'm going to give Brian Paddock a shot. Brian Paddock from the Liberal Democrats. On this, on what Labour is saying today about this this government report, the the, the, the government report also says that the uh, training, the people who are in training at the moment, will deliver thirteen thousand and forty eight full time equivalent nursing staff by twenty nineteen. So it's a very selective quoting from this report. The fact is, 
the Conservatives said nothing at all about the NHS until the Liberal Democrats said they were going to provide the eight billion. Published a four and a half page report showing where the money was going to come from. They didn't. They said so they weren't going to pay it. And Labour are only offering two point five billion when the chief executive of the English NHS says the NHS must have eight billion. Labour are being complacent. They think the voters trust them on the NHS, and therefore they are not delivering what the NHS are asking for. Okay. William Dartmouth from UK. Briefly, if I can, so I've, get I've, one in. I've got three lightning points. So can I request, with earnestness, that you make one? Choose the best one and go for it. <clears throat> the best one is that, uh, which is which is unique to us, is that we would get out of the EU, and that would enable us to abolish the working time directive, which makes it very difficult and expensive to provide twenty-four hour uh, medical care. All right, thanks for that. Now, Chile, you get a shot. What would you like to hear an answer to that might help you? Um, in the last five years, we've seen the closures of um, organisations that support communities such as after school clubs. We've seen the closures of um, youth centres. We've seen, you know, the stopping of um, programmes that support young people and trying to get them into politics. Yeah. Um, and what are your plans to ensure that programmes that aim to promote and, you know, diversity and inclusiveness in communities are protected? Conservative Greg Clark. Uh, well, that's not the case. I think it's really important that we get uh, more people engaged. One of the things that's been f a fantastic success during the last five years, I think, uh, I hope your guests would agree, has been the National Citizen uh, Service. And uh, we've had 130,000 young people, 16 and 17 year olds, doing volunteering, learning about citizenship. Uh, and we're making an offer, uh, if we're re-elected, that there'll be a place for every 16 and 17 year old. I think it's one of the things that we should all do uh, as elected politicians uh, to do our bit, whoever people are going to vote for, to get them engaged in politics. In my campaign here, I've got young people every night coming out with me. Uh, and I've even, when young people uh, come out and they say that um, they're in favour of other parties, I've even put them in touch with my opponents because I think it's really important okay. that people get the bug at this age. Okay, Temi, quick thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs impressed. down, because off the back of IC um, ICS, you closed another programme that was called the Prime Minister's Global Fellowship, which we, uh, members of the Conservative Party, said they were going to protect. Okay, William Dartmouth, I, I, I cut you short a moment ago, so have a go. Try and convince <laughs> Um, well, I think that we've got a very exciting and important proposal on education, which is basically more vocational training along the German and, uh, model. And we would scrap tuition fees for science, technology, engineering, maths, maths, maths and medicine. We wouldn't just reduce them, we'd scrap them entirely. Okay. Um, Impressed? Absolute bull. Because um, by coming out of, I, I by coming out of the EU, you can't by, say it's not our by coming out of the EU, you don't stop programs like Erasmus, which allows so many young people to go around Europe and get great education. And secondly, we've heard this from Lib Dem the last time. Well, those are the Lib Dems. I'm not in the Lib Dems. Yeah, we're actually. not here about talking about Ethiopia um, policies anymore. We want the real deal. Yeah, Mary Craig. Oh, oh, well, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this, Terry. But please be gentle. Um, look, you're right. After school clubs have been really badly hit under this government. We've got a, a plan for a national primary childcare service, so your mums and dads can have eight till six wraparound care, enabling them to work longer. But under this government as well, we've also seen music and sports after school activities really badly cut, and I know that from my own constituency in Wakefield and that's because of the cut, massive cuts to local government we have said we will protect the whole education budget not just the school's budget and we'll set up that national primary uh, child care service by scrapping the government's ill thought out free schools program. Sammy you pleased you happy? No no still because still um, again there. the free school program free food um, meal program is amazing because there's so many kids who do not have you know, the food on the weekend. No, it's not, not, no, no, no. Free school. That's when they. That's when people set up schools where they're not needed. I'm not talking about school meals. Free schools. But then, again, there's, we've got so many kids, like you said previously, like classrooms with more than 30 kids in the class. You know, we're we, need cap as, class we, need, sizes. we need as much schools as we can get. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cap class sizes for those kids in the over 30. Brian Paddock from the Liberal Democrats. You've got to get that. In fact, what, what Labour are promising is to protect the education budget into increasing it with, with inflation. The Conservatives are talking about increasing it only in terms of the number of increasing pupils. The Liberal Democrats are the only party who are committing to increase per pupil and protecting against inflation and for education from cradle to college 
so that across the whole range. What we're also promising to do is to allow 16 and 17 year olds to vote in all elections, including Westminster elections, to try and get young people more involved. If we're going to get 16 to 17 year olds and we can't get 18 and above to vote, we need the information. And I think that's what, one thing that's missing. There isn't a clarity or a easy access to information. Isn't, isn't there, Timmy? What, you mean just the detail of the policy that's being offered? Exactly. You, can, I, you, look, I, I, you know how to use a computer. You're a teaching assistant. You can just log on and have a, have but a look easiest, at what people That's are easier said than done because you log on and there's this political jargon that you have to Google every three words to find out what that word means. Yeah. You know. Tell and luckily, with patchwork, we've been able to get you know a good insight into policies and politics. Yeah. It's still not that's plain not for, English, is what but we're that's saying. not for everyone. We need. Yeah. We, we, Tammy's right. We've got right. to have we've got to have policies that, that that are written and tailored for young people, so that young people actually can get engaged with the political process. And if you extend votes to sixteen and seventeen year olds, that will really focus political parties' minds on actually concentrating yeah. on communicating with young people yeah. in a way they're not doing at the moment. You look frustrated, Brian. I mean, you look, you, you look I, like you're frustrated. You can't get through. I mean, John, I'm, can I'm I really a, a plug yeah, for yeah, a, a great very plug. simple and straightforward. The, uh, the, the last day for registration to vote is tomorrow, as you know. Uh, there's a very simple website uh, called aboutmyvote.co.uk. Uh, come out every everyone uh, who's listening, especially young people who may not be registered. It is the it's the simplest okay. website. You can be registered in two minutes. Okay. I've got to got to got to cut this bit off. To my political panel, thanks very much of you for coming in. Show me take it. I wish I could have you guys in every week. I mean, <laughs> I may just do that. Coming up, Brian May of Queen, Alex Salmond, you name it. It's a massive lineup. Just hang around. <laughs>